Julie. Hello, I'm Lucy's mum. And welcome to Point Girls Biscuit Battles. We have not one, not two, but three challenges involving biscuits coming up. And also listen out for some biscuit trivia. Let the challenges begin. Number one, Mum. Challenge number one, Lucy, is building a biscuit tower. You have to use at least one of each of the McVitie's biscuits in your tower. The brick girl with the tallest biscuit tower at the end of two minutes is the winner. And the winner gets to eat one of the biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> the loser probably will as well. And did you realise that these biscuits were purchased on a recent trip to World Market? If you haven't checked out World Market yet, you must. This could go very well or not well at all. The thing is, we haven't even thought about tactics or practiced or anything. No, so this is very spontaneous. Spontaneous, that's the worst. It's going to be rubbish, isn't it? Yeah. Well, three, two, one, go! We thought we'd give you some fun biscuity trivia to enjoy whilst we're doing this. Studies show that 40% of Brits have said they've been enjoying more biscuits during the lockdown. Oh, yours is very nice. Mine's not very exciting. <laughs> I have a feeling it doesn't have to be the boring. most exciting biscuit tower. Right. We're going for the hobnobs because they're crinkly. If you laid all the Jaffa cakes eaten each year in a line, they would stretch from the UK to Australia and back. Uh, no! Oh, crumbs! Oh, crumbs! <laughs> Biscuits are bought by 27 million households and eaten on 6 billion occasions a year. I was thinking more about the aesthetics of my design and not about structural integrity. I thought you said it was the tallest tower. Yeah, well I thought if I can't have a tall tower I'll have a oh, pretty yours is tower. pretty. 61% of the UK have a biscuit tin and Norwich people are the biggest fans of biscuit tins. Mm. Oh God. I think, oh, this is so hard. I think we should have engineering and mathematics involved. <laughs> oh, I've broken a biscuit. British biscuit consumption is the highest in the world, higher than all major European countries and even 35% higher than the US. I have a feeling I haven't done this very well. Oh my god, yours is amazing! <laughs> mine, mine looks like, you know, on a ship, where you get like, like those funnels. Yeah. What do you call those? The funnels. Oh, 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 oh! I think mine's taller. Oh my god, yours is huge! And wider. Oh my god! I'm going to claim victory of challenge one. Yeah, rightly so. I was a bit rubbish at that. <laughs> do you have a measuring tape? We could see exactly how much taller mine is. Yours is, oh, eight inches exactly, or... Respectable. But what the hell is this centimetre tape? Well, what they do don't have centimetres in them. Oh my God. They're inches, aren't they? Yeah, but I was gonna tell everyone in centimetres. Well, what do the math? I have no idea. <laughs> or the math. <laughs> Mine is a solid 11 inches. It's all about size in this game. Yes, indeed. So, right. shall we move on to challenge two? Yes. Challenge two is walk a shortbread Jenga. Unfortunately, we've already got one box, so it's going to be a very quick game. Yeah, we didn't think this through. Plus, walkers are expensive, you know. Yes. This is going to be a very poor game of Jenga. <laughs> I'm feeling this is going to be an abject failure. Oh, this is. This is going to be an epic fail. So maybe I should just move the camera. I don't know so if you can, can even see. see it amongst this huge pile of rubble. <laughs> this was our attempt at Jenga, and you can see. <laughs> can you see? <laughs> this time, get out your what? microscope. Okay, so Walker's Jenga was a massive fail. So we've come up with another idea <laughs> after several minutes of thinking. <laughs> this idea is we're gonna try and make a picture. We have to make each other's faces with the biscuits. At the end, I guess we'll just have to agree who's done it best. Or well, first we'll get Rudge just oh, to yeah. judge. We'll get a judge. We'll get a judge. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're gonna give ourselves another two minutes. Let's clear the decks a bit. 
Are you ready? I'm no good at art, let alone making something no, like this. No, this is going to be interesting. Yeah. Go. Biscuits were the first food to reach the South Pole with the explorer Roald Amundsen in 1911. They're all stuck together. Can I just break this? God, you are really hindering me here and my artistic well, flow. Oh, well, I'll just have to have half a biscuit then. On average, Ricks buy 500 biscuits per year. Oh, no. Look, oh, you're all over my picture. Oh, sorry, but look at this. These are rubbish for making faces. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the Queen is an avid rich tea fan and enjoys a pot of freshly brewed Earl Grey alongside a few rich tea biscuits before breakfast. Her favourite tea cake is the chocolate biscuit cake which includes 8 ounces of rich tea biscuits. That's nice. I think I was going to I'm just going to kick up one face. The iconic brand Hobnobs was launched by McVitie's in 1985. Huge demand for the original variety led to the introduction of the chocolate variety in 1987. According to McVitie's, the chocolate side of the milk chocolate digestives is actually on the bottom of the biscuit. No, you know, you've gone all over your ear. Look, I've done your ears and your glasses and you've ruined it. Oh, I'm sorry, but your hair is always like that, isn't it? Getting in my way. <laughs> I think it's getting in my way today. Okay, let's do it. Trying to I move over there. and give mum some more space because <laughs> three quarters of the table isn't enough apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> what is that? I'd like to present my uh, beautiful picture of my beautiful daughter Lucy. As you can see, there is lots of lovely blonde hair shown by the Jacob's Cream Crackers and her quizzical eyebrows with the chocolate um, digestives and then we have digestives and walkers for the beautiful round eyes and the nose and the little smiley mouth. Mm. Look how much space I was left with. I'm still going on about the space. <laughs> oh, look at the difference in size. <laughs> What it is. <laughs> okay, so this is my artistic impression of my mother. These are her glasses and her ears with earrings because she always wears earrings. That's true. These are her eyebrows, oh slightly God. larger than in real life. <laughs> <laughs> I took some uh, I took some liberty with the eyebrows. Oh, artistic license. Yeah. What are those things on top of my eyebrows? <laughs> so this is your fringe or bangs as they say in America. Oh, so I've just got bangs but no other hair. Yeah, well there's no space for other hair. <laughs> <laughs> What's that thing at the bottom? The, this is your mouth. What? <laughs> with, and these are your teeth. Oh well thanks! <laughs> Pointing out I've got very British teeth. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got these, these protruding, uneven teeth, but no bottom lip. We run out of time. <laughs> so we've, we've summoned an impartial judge to uh, take a look at our work. Well, it has to be this one. Oh, that was my creation. Oh, like, no, yeah. I lost. How could that have happened? Well, look at that horrible mess. That's well, I think we should ask the uh, viewers to decide. Oh, oh, that's yes. a good idea. Good idea. <laughs> Let us know who you think did the best artistic work today in the comments below. <laughs>Okay, welcome to challenge three, the Dunker Biscuit Challenge. We have put the names of five different biscuits in a hat. Hobnobs, Digestives, Chocolate Digestives, Rich Tea and Walker Shortbread. We're both going to take the name of one biscuit from a hat and that will be our biscuit. We're then going to hold it in the tea and see whose biscuit will survive the longest without breaking. The one that goes the longest wins. I have got, oh no! Tea. Um, there is a slight problem. What's that? I forgot to get the milk. Oh no. So we've got black tea, which is what I drink anyhow. 
I know that's not traditional dunking tea or builder's tea, but it is my tea. <laughs> Mighty! Mighty! Okay, so we're just gonna take our biscuits. I've got the hobnobs, you've got the chocolate digestives. And then upon three, we shall put it in the tea. And whoever survives the longest without breaking wins. Ready? One, two, three. Apparently, 45 degrees is the perfect dunking angle. We didn't get our protractors out for this, but hopefully we're roughly in the ballpark. Apparently, different biscuits require a different amount of dunks. Chocolate coatings form a barrier around the biscuit when dunking and hold it together when it would otherwise break. Hobnobs are only suitable for short dunks because it's an oat based biscuit, so the larger oat particles provide less structural strength to the biscuit. Oh, oh no! no! Oh, oh no! no! Oh. They yes. both broke at the exact same time. Well, perhaps we need to each choose another biscuit and see All how right. we get on. <laughs> okay, I've got Walker Short. Oh, that's a good one. I've got Normal Digestive. Okay. I think we know who's going to win this one. Well, I don't know. One, two, three. I don't know if I can get half of my oh, Normal huge. Digestive in. I'll just have to put the corner. Yeah, I should turn it this way for aesthetic purposes. Research from McVitie's revealed the dunking habits of Brits, showing a surge in popularity of dunking amongst younger generations, with nearly 20% more young people dunking now than people over 55. Gone. 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 Oh, still there. still there. See how long you can go. Challenge. I think you won two to one on the biscuit I challenge. I did. I did amazingly after a terrible start. I'm still quite proud of my tower. I think your tower was pretty awesome. Thanks. Mm -hmm. We hope you enjoyed the Brick Girls Biscuit Battle. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye.